Hi, this is John Reed, johnnyrp.com. Continuing along with the uh, NetWeaver career strategy presentation uh, created by fellow SAP mentor Tony D. Tomasis, I'm offering my commentary on Tony's video. This is part two, so if you haven't seen part one, check out my YouTube channel or wherever else I might have posted it. And where we left off was on core skills, which are core to your career and where you're trying to achieve mastery. And this is the end of those slides, I think. Ah, yes, patience. Then the emerging skills. I think that's really good advice. You want to pick areas you like. If you don't have a passion for the areas you're pushing into, you're not going to go that extra mile, get involved with geeky side projects, uh, have passionate arguments and discussions with your peers, listen to long webinars even when they get boring, uh, because you really care. Uh, so that's really important. Um, and you want to pick a few different skills that you know might be a little more uh, risky. You're not sure about the adoption, but you have your core skill and then you have your emerging skills to combine the two. Here's some that Tony is suggesting for uh, NetWeaver slash basis individuals. A few of those struck me as more core skills, but those things you can debate. Definitely environmental compliance. Uh, companies that pursue sustainability measures are showing bottom line improvement. So forget all the uh, goodwill that's generated. It, it's also having bottom line impact. Governments risk and compliance, absolutely. Compliance is a huge issue, and more and more we're also seeing software functionality that pulls in these themes. Important to be able to master that from a basis side because there's all kinds of roles and authorization issues that play into it. Virtualization skills, definitely big. SAP is going to have another virtualization week coming up. Uh, it's a virtual conference. Keep an eye out for that. UI skills, now you're heading a little more into the development side in some instances, but UI uh, improved UI, improved user experience, uh, riffing on uh, new uh, rich internet application technologies is going to be big uh, in the coming years. So those are merging skills. Consulting skills. So yeah, even when you're a full-time professional, you want to have those consulting skills. I spoke a little bit on the, in the first part of my commentary. So here's some examples of how you can acquire these so-called consulting skills, which are really a portfolio of soft skills that make you more valuable than a strict heads down technical person. I see team leadership is very important because it's a way to not only improve your rate, but a lot of times team lead allows the best of both worlds where you can retain your hands-on involvement, but also develop leadership and management skills. Solving business problems. Business process expert, there's a whole emerging skill set around that, and I see it less as the distinct role and more a skill area that everyone should look into and acquire bits and pieces that are most relevant. Again, it's about becoming that go-to person, becoming uh, perhaps somewhat indispensable on the project as liaison between different kinds of teams. If you can be that glue, you're not going to go away anytime soon. You might even get a raise. Process modeling definitely coming into play more and more. And as we see these tools integrated further and further into the actual ERP systems, we're going to see more and more of that in recent uh, or maybe not recent, but I would say next two, three years. Something to keep an eye on. I would classify that definitely as emerging. Change management. Remember, there's a technical version of change management and also the human side of change management. Both are important to a basis person. So those are our consulting skills. And with that, we've uh, reached the end of my second commentary track.